Hey, so good afternoon. It's Matt Green. I am your uh, host today for Real Insights Live. We're super excited to have a fantastic guest, founder of the Sisu platform and app, Brian Charlesworth. Before we get started though today, I just want to remind you of a couple things. We've got a really great upcoming show. Uh, let me just fix that. There we go. Uh, upcoming show next week on Wednesday at noon with Julie Facer. Julie is a certified coach for Jack Canfield. Many of you might be familiar with Jack Canfield and his Success Principles book. Phenomenal content and should be a really interesting uh, interview with Julie Facer. If you are new to our program, I encourage you to make sure that you like our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash KW Utah. Certainly, you're welcome to follow me as well, facebook.com forward slash Matt Green Utah. And uh, we periodically post great content for uh, Keller Williams agents, uh, Utah agents here in the state of Utah, um, and uh, often have people join us from all over the country and world uh, in our interviews. So uh, excited today about uh, the content um, and as many of you know, if you've uh, interacted with me in business or have attended any of my classes uh, over the years, I'm a huge fan of the four disciplines of execution. And, um, and the content today or the app and, and, and the discussion um, around Sisu and the application uh, that's been developed by uh, Brian and his team um, really supports a, a lot of the things that I'm super passionate about that I've seen just have dramatic changes uh, in our business. Um, and so I, I kind of wanted to start there uh, with the four disciplines of execution um, because that's one of the things that got me so amped up about uh, this interview, looking forward to it. Um, and, and as we jump into this, um, we'll kind of intertwine and, and, and talk a little bit about some of those principles and how those have been uh, applied towards uh, utilizing this app to help us stay focused on the right things. So without further ado, uh, l uh, excited to introduce my guest, uh, Brian Charlesworth. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. So uh, Brian, why don't you start out by just giving a, a brief introduction about yourself and um, what led you to seeing a need for developing this platform uh, for, for sales agents? Okay, great. Happy to do that. So my background has been technology. Uh, back when I was in my 20s, I, uh, I was in the telecommunications business. I, I had the first Nextel dealer in the state of Utah, then uh, started a software company that was really early on thinking ahead of our time that did a lot of the stuff you do in Siri today. Uh, and we were doing it back then, but you didn't have the visual screen that you have in phones today. So because of that, uh, you know, it was all voice driven and text to speech driven and things like that. So uh, then from there, I, I had an investment firm. We bought uh, franchise companies. And because of my passion for technology, even then, our first franchise company that we bought was a company called Housemaster. Many of you probably are familiar with that, the home inspection company. Um, one of the first things we did there was actually build a software platform to give the large lenders such as Chase and Wells Fargo, their good faith estimate data. Hmm. And so uh, from there, uh, ended up, the company I was working with ended up uh, being in the process of selling. And I had an opportunity to get into uh, real estate because my wife is in real estate. And she said, hey, why don't you come help me build my business? So uh, that's kind of where I've been and how I got to where I am now. Awesome. Good. And so um, I guess I'd like to start maybe just with uh, this. As I prepared for our call today, I went back to some of my um, favorite parts of the four disciplines of execution model. I came across a couple uh, little quotes that I thought were so relevant. One was, when you're executing a strategy that requires a lasting change in the behavior of other people, you are facing one of the greatest leadership challenges you will ever meet. Um, which is, I, th I think, so relevant. Having been in leadership roles now for uh, you know a decade plus, um, I recognize that probably the biggest challenge for any of us is to get the people within our organization to modify their behavior. And uh, in, in what ways do you think um, that was compelling to you with development of the CSU app? And 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 maybe we'll get into a little bit about how that's accomplished that. 
Yeah, well, when I first got into this industry, uh, Spring and I agreed that we should hire a coach for me so that I could, you know, learn in three months what it takes most people three years to learn. Mm. And one of the first things I saw was that I was held accountable to tracking. And one of the first things I also saw was that um, all the people who were making over $300,000 a year, they were tracking their numbers on a regular basis and time blocking on their calendars and not letting just emails and phone calls get in the way of doing that. So I saw that really early on. Yeah, so true. So um, Edwards Deming said, anytime the majority of the people behave a particular way, the majority of the time, the people are not the problem. The problem is inherent in the system. And as a leader, you are responsibility uh, or you're responsible for the system. So you take ownership in the system or model that is supporting the activities, the habits, the behaviors of the people within your organization, right? So what role um, does that play or does CC play in helping people focus on the right thing? So um, let's talk about that as you saw a need for that or, or maybe just a gap in the industry that was missing something that allowed you to provide that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think the industry is getting better and better um, where people are now treating the business like a business. You have a lot of, you have a lot of people and I, I could start with Gary Keller who have, have written books, right? The millionaire real estate agent, all about treating your business like a business where a lot of people uh, I've known in real estate don't know how much money they made last month, don't know what they're going to make next month, and don't even know what they made last year until they file their taxes. So um, by doing this, it basically, it's something that I think leaders thrive on. And sometimes people who aren't the leaders are a little fearful of it maybe because it drives accountability to them. But once they get into it and start doing it for a month or two, they're going to see that their results are going to improve. And it actually becomes addictive because the way we've done it, they actually have the ability to see that right in front of their face on their phone with the app 100% of the time. Yeah, nice. So, so as, you were, as you got more and more involved in the industry, started selling real estate, you saw that there was this, this lack of system or model for agents to consistently focus on the right things, track their, con or track their activities, and thus was born Sisu, right? Is that exactly. Yeah. And, and me being a firsthand example, because I was in the industry for about two years um, as, I, as I saw this need. Yeah, awesome. So uh, what, why don't you give us a little overview of the application and uh, maybe help us understand you know, why you picked the activities that you picked uh, for the person to focus on? Sure. So I, I don't think we've done anything out of the ordinary there. I think there are a lot of companies that have said, hey, you need to track this. And really, it's from making the right number of contacts every day. And if you do that, you're going to go on the you know eight to 10 appointments a month, which you need to do to be successful in real estate. And if you do that, you know, you're going to go to the next phase, which is either signing listing agreements or buyer broker agreements. And from there, taking it to being under contract and being closed. And so those are the activities we're tracking. I don't think it's anything new. I think they've been tracked in the industry, but uh, with some of the coaching companies, maybe on websites that were built 20 years ago, or what I'm seeing the most is what people are typically using is either a spreadsheet or a piece of paper. Uh, in fact, I ask a lot of coaches, how do your people give you their numbers on a weekly basis? And they say, they just uh, email them to me, you know, and they've, they've just been keeping track of them on a piece of paper. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Have you found, at least in my experience in the industry, and even I think with my own personal uh, tracking of my activities, uh, before I tracked them specifically, I always assumed I was doing more than I was actually doing. Um, and then wondering why I wasn't maybe getting the results that I wanted. And it seems like in my experience in talking with other agents, they're always making an assumption that they're doing more of the activities than they're truly doing until they start uh, very specifically tracking those activities on a daily basis. And then there becomes an awareness of you know, how they're spending their time and day. Do you think that's the case in what you're finding in your interaction with agents and, and implementation of CSU? Absolutely. I, I think one of the key things you mentioned there, Matt, is daily because even with most coaching companies, they're getting those numbers reported weekly. And having had a coach myself, I know that um, 
you know, if my call was on a Monday, Sunday evening would roll around and I would try to reflect back. I wasn't trying to lie, but I was trying to reflect back on exactly what my activities were, right? And it's so much easier if it's right in front of you all the time and real time tracking so that, so that it's accurate. And then you get a real case for, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm not, and you can see it visually. I think that's a big, one of the biggest things about what we do is the visual display so that you can look at something and instantly know where you stand. Yeah, awesome. I think that instant feedback, and I, I think you make a great point. I think the shorter that we can um, reduce the feedback loop on our activity versus reporting, the more quickly we can adjust and focus our activities to be doing the things that are most impactful. So whether it's a weekly reporting or daily reporting or even real time reporting, there's value in that in a huge way because it keeps it really clear in front of us. We think about um, a compelling scoreboard, uh, you know, for a, a game of some sort. And, and this is so key for gamification, keeping things active and live amongst our teams, right? Is the ability to see instantly where I'm at in relationship to my um, goals and, and my peers who, I'm, who I might be competing with, whether it's myself or others. But we need to be able to see that in real time. Um, imagine a scenario where in professional sports or any sporting activity, if you only found out what the score was at the end of the game, um, it, it would really change the, the course of the way people play, right? So that, well, that live that scoring is critical. Yeah, imagine this, Matt. So if, if I'm tracking, if I'm in real estate and I'm tracking and reporting my numbers to my coach once a week, once a week, I'm going to be able to look at how I'm doing. And so 52 times a year, I'm going to be able to make adjustments. But if I'm tracking that real time or even daily, not quite real time, I'll be able to make those adjustments over, you know, 360 times a year, right? Yeah. Yeah, powerful. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge for those that are only listening um, wh when this is in podcast format. But if you don't mind, why don't we uh, share your screen and uh, show a few of uh, examples of how the app works and what the scoreboards look like, et cetera. So do you want to just kind of walk us through some of the platform? Yeah, absolutely. Are you seeing that okay? Yep. Okay. Great, so I'm not gonna get into the app, but I wanted to just um, come into here right really quick so people could just see. Um, again, real time, you're able to put your clients in, take them from being in your pipeline to signed to under contract to closed. You know your conversion ratios by looking right here. Um, and you always know this is the scoreboard that's in front of your face. You always know on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis, you know exactly where you stand. Uh, everything we do has the color coordination of cold to hot. So if you're on pace to hit your goal, well, let's start with not being on pace. If you're not on pace, you're cold, it's blue. If you're, if it's, uh, you're on pace to hit your goal, it's yellow. And if you have hit your goal, uh, everything's going to be orange. So you can quickly look at the screen and see what's there. And in this case, you can see also at the bottom right hand corner, um, when we're on that client screen, you know exactly what you have under contract all the time, what you've made this year, what you've made this week. And uh, it's just a really, really easy way to uh, keep track of things. Now for the teams and brokerages, what we've done is put in place uh, on, from our website, you can log in right here. And when you log in, what's going to happen is you're going to come to a a screen that gives you the ability to see either your personal dashboard or your team dashboard so that you can see live exactly where you're at all the time. Not only on those six items we discussed, but we have uh, over a dozen other items and ultimately based on customer feedback, we're going to allow you to track any item you choose here in the very near future. I love how you've implemented the um, goal pacing, the ability for someone to see, okay, in relationship to the time, period of time that I've established for this goal to be accomplished, where should I be? Which is uh, what so many of these platforms lack is that goal pacing piece, but I think it's so critical for us, whether we're uh, working with our you know, own set of priorities and goals or helping coach um, other team members. Uh, let's talk just real briefly for a minute before we jump into some of the other screens about accountability because you brought up that uh, word which in many in many uh, cases people think very negatively around uh, that word there's I think just generally in um, our society there's negative connotations around the word accountability uh, and, and I think it's important to help us think about accountability as really uh, you know ownership uh, and, and it's not 
it's neither good nor bad. It just simply is. And I think this helps demonstrate, you know, taking accountability from something that is negative and creating a platform that we can then utilize for uh, understanding and supporting our people um, and then approaching it from a coaching standpoint versus uh, negative accountability, like holding it over someone's head versus let's understand how we can help you do this better so that we can work together in helping you accomplish the goals that you've identified. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you, if you look at this, uh, let's just take a look at appointments here. Um, you can see for us to be on pace for appointments in this scenario, we would need to be, that's what these little lines are as your pacer. You would need to be at about 32 appointments. And this, uh, in this case, there's been 28 appointments. So here you're looking at, um, you know, we're almost there. So it's, it's pretty easy to uh, collaborate as a team and say, Hey, let's, let's really make the extra effort this week to get where we need to be. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You want to step us through a couple other pieces? Yeah. So one of the, one of the first things we realized as we um, rolled out the dashboards and uh, from some feedback from some of our teams is that we needed to give the ability for the admin or the transaction coordinator to make sure that the, the screens are accurate all the time because dashboards that aren't accurate don't do a lot of value, don't serve a lot of purpose, right? So um, one of the things we found is agents get, uh, after a little bit of time, they get pretty good at tracking this, but there's certain things that maybe they're not doing that, that they should so that the report that I'm about to show you uh, will show up accurately. And one of those is Whenever somebody puts somebody under contract here, we can let you come in and sort this any way you want. You can search for any clients you want. So your whole company, company's database is in here. Um, but one of the things we'll allow you to do is if you come in here and look at, hey, these are the most recent people we put under contract. Well, one of the things that someone should do when they go under contract is they should actually put in uh, the settlement date. So, so that they know what they're gonna get paid and, and when they're gonna get paid that. So I can just come in here and it uh, gives me the ability to say, oh, you know what, the settlement date is this day. And in this case, I don't know when the settlement date is, so I'm not going to change that. And just make those adjustments so that uh, someone can quickly get in and make sure that everything is accurate that they're looking at here. And that really allows you to start providing projections for the team. Is that correct? Yeah, so what we're getting into right here is one of our reports. And this, this will actually allow you to provide those projections. This is something that our team leaders and our brokers are using for their members to report out on a weekly basis. And so they're coming in here and saying actually what they've done for the month. You can quickly look at this and see, hey, you know what? The appointments are where they should be. The contacts probably aren't where they should be. Um, in this case. So just quickly by the color of the field, you can tell what, kind of where they're at relative to pacing and goal, correct? Exactly. Yeah. So in this case, you can see, well, they've been on seven appointments, but only had 16 contacts. You can see that's they're probably not accurately recording their contacts. If they are, they should make even more contacts. Imagine how many appointments they could go on because that's a pretty high, pretty high uh, conversion ratio there, right? Um, yeah, that's unbelievable <laughs> conversion ratio. <laughs> um, so, and then in this one, uh, from appointments gone on to signed, you can see their goal here is uh, based on team standard to sign two a month, and they have three agreements signed, so they've hit that. Um, listings, they don't have listings, so that's in blue. And under contract, they actually have three under contract. So they are on pace to be at their team uh, of four, which is the team standard here, and uh, on pace to hit that goal. One of the things we do is we actually um, have them come in and set personal goals, and I, it looks like that hasn't been done on this individual at this point. I love so they, that concept, though. I mean, the, you know, each team, and this is one of the challenges for, for many teams, is they know that there's a cost associated with having a team member. Um, yet, sometimes we don't clearly set the expectations on how many transactions and what activities need to be done at a minimum just for us to uh, make sense of staying in business with that team member. Uh, yet, we don't also want to um, limit what that person's vision and goals are. So I love how you've identified, you know, both ways to measure and establish a team standard, yet also allow the individual uh, agent and team member to identify set goals and track against personal goals as well. Very cool. Yeah, and, and talking about accountability, so many times we set a goal and we don't really think about it again. And we set that goal at the first of the year. 
uh, and then we don't think about it again until the end of the year. And we're like, oh yeah, I didn't quite get there, right? So in this case, it's, it's always top of mind. You're always focused on that goal. And um, what happens here is you have this pipeline and, and um, you know, we, we all know who have been in real estate that you should add eight to 10 people, new people to your pipeline every month. So here's the people who have been added to the pipeline. Here's the people who are already in the pipeline. Then you have your buyer and listing agreements uh, that were signed. So anybody you've gotten signed this month is gonna show up right here. So I can instantly know, hey, I've got $28,000 in net commissions coming into me if I can just get these guys under contract. So it really motivates you to take it to that next level. And then uh, from under contract, you always know how much you have uh, they're ready to be closed, right? So that's what's under contract, which is the same amount here that is um, set to close here over the next couple of months. So again, just one way to quickly and easily know exactly whether you're an agent looking at yourself and being able to say, hey, where can I make changes? Or whether you're a manager uh, actually looking at and working on helping your people hit their goals. Yeah, I think one of the things that's so powerful about this model is um, the, the ability to start to create predictability and consistency in a agent's business, uh, which is you know kind of an epidemic in our industry, especially for agents that start to get busy for the first time, or or and in many cases they've done this for years and years where they have this uh, roller coaster of income. They get super busy, they stop prospecting, or or uh, maybe they don't even realize that they've slowed down on their prospecting to put out the fires and handle the existing business. And then all of a sudden after several really good months financially, then they find themselves uh, lacking of, of transactional closing um, properties for a couple of months and their income dramatically drops. And it creates this uh, emotional uh, experience, obviously for people going through these highs and lows uh, and certainly financial impact for our families, et cetera. And, and the cool thing about this is as you and I worked through a lot of this model, um, uh, you know, with your spouse and, and her team, this, this idea for us to be able to start helping agents remove some of that um, ups and downs in their business that, that, uh, and creating the consistency. And, and you're exactly right. When we start adding eight to 10 new people to our pipeline every single month, and stay focused on that, then consistency really starts to show up. And the cool thing about this report is we can literally predict the kind of business and income an agent or team member is gonna have 60 to 90 days out with huge amounts of accuracy uh, because of the way the pipeline works and, and the focus on the activities, et cetera. And, and so as soon as someone starts to, to lag because they're getting busy or whatever and they stop focusing, we can immediately bring them back to focus on the right things so that they don't experience that drop in income 60 to 90 days out. It's such a, a powerful tool. Yeah, we see that all the time where people will be in the orange down here in these three bottom ones, right? And they have eight to 10, eight to 10 deals under contract and closing. And because of that, they're spending all their time focused on getting those to closing and they're not spending their time in the contact area. And that's, I think, when they get into that roller coaster. If somebody will set their goals and make sure that all of these stay out of the blue and stay in the yellow and orange, that's all they need to do. If they do that, they will consistently earn that income that they need to earn on a monthly basis. Yeah, awesome. Okay, uh, anything else? Um, yeah, no. Uh, I mean, we have some areas we're going, but I can jump into that a little bit later. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's looking. Uh, I, I think um, uh, it's it's just such an awesome opportunity for us to help the people in uh, in in the industry. You know, create that consistency in their business. All right. So, uh, as you think about this uh, for a team and adopting this either individually or. Uh, within your team, what are some of the keys to successful adoption of starting to utilize the platform? Yeah, so having watched this now for a while and seeing the, what, what makes somebody successful in adopting this, the first thing is to make sure that everybody on the team or in the brokerage is doing it. Um, if you try to roll out goals and you have a goal as an owner of hitting 17 closed transactions a month and you know, you only are having four of your people track that, you really can't get a gauge on where you're at real time, right? So it's critical to roll it out and have it be adopted by the entire business. 
And uh, as long as you do that, I think you're going to see great results from what we've seen. Yeah. So there's a guy that wrote a book, one of my favorite books, all time of business a guy named Chet Holmes, who was actually, um, he ended up doing a lot with Tony Robbins in business mastery. A lot of the business mastery stuff that Tony Robbins did was based on uh, the teachings that Chet, Chet actually partnered with him. And Chet was actually uh, worked uh, for many years with Charlie Munger, who you may recall, uh, Charlie Munger is the uh, partner of Warren Buffett, right? right. Um, and uh, just brilliant, brilliant guy. He wrote a book called The Ultimate Sales Machine. And originally they were going to title the book, um, Big headed discipline or something like that. <laughs> and the and, and this and the marketing people came back and said, You can't release a book called Pig Headed Discipline. No one will buy it. <laughs> so they changed it to the ultimate sales machine. And it's really a brilliant book. Uh, but he talks about uh, the the leader's responsibility in implementing uh, systems, models, expectations, but then the expectation or the requirement of the leader to have this pig headed discipline in inspecting what they expect. And, and I think um, as I've seen people implement tools like this, the place where it really falls short is the leadership uh, or the leader owning the expectation and then inspecting it just consistently over and over and over again. And, and it, it, it was interesting when we hired Franklin Covey a number of years ago to help us with the four disciplines of execution and implementing that in our business. One of those consultants said to me, he said, uh, Matt, this says easy does hard. He goes, you'll, you'll read the book. You'll think, oh, no problem. I get, understand it. I get it conceptually. I can implement this. And he said, but, but I'm going to tell you, it says easy, does hard. And, and, and what I learned from that was that he, in fact, was right because everyone kind of makes, makes this emotional connection and, and understands intellectually how this works and the, the value of tracking the numbers. But it's really not a habit for most of us and or most of us won't continually do it unless someone is really inspecting it. So what I suspect in whether it's implementation of this specific platform or another, the leader really has to be have that pig headed discipline to just consistently set the expectation. And that might mean for weeks and weeks and weeks just coming back and going, hey, so and so I noticed that you didn't update your numbers today because at the end of the day we still have to push a button on an app or something to show and reflect the activities that we did for the day, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the key is, and I think any leaders are going to see this, uh, what this does is it makes it a lot easier to manage a team or to manage a brokerage because you can look at it and instantly know how somebody's doing. And when you meet with them, it's not about telling them what they're doing wrong. You just need to ask them, hey, well, what do you see when you look at this, you know, and they're going to be able to answer those questions for you. Yeah. It's really about inspecting reality. And then once we understand reality, then we can start to develop uh, strategies and plans around how to move forward in so many cases. And I think I kind of inferred this at the beginning of the call. A lot of times we're making assumptions about activities that we actually did. And in many cases, because salespeople are naturally optimistic uh, we always think that things are either better than what they really are, or we did more activities than we really did, or the likelihood of us closing deals are more likely than they really are. And so, you know, that's not reality necessarily. And this helps us keep our conversation based in reality, which then allows our consulting, coaching, or focus to be much more effective, I think. Yeah, absolutely. We are doing some things as well to help uh, motivate the agents to to track and to make it fun and to gamify this. And uh, so I'll show you some of those here in a second. Yeah, talk a little bit about gamification and, and let's jump into that. Okay. So, you know, um, and what I mean, when you say gamification, what does that mean? Well, for me, it means making making it fun, making awards, being able to have challenges and contests. I think a great example of that, and I'm going to bring up Strava. We actually like to call ourselves the Strava. For those of you who are athletes, bikers and stuff, you're, you're very familiar with the gamification. We like to call ourselves the Strava of the real estate industry because um, that's actually exactly what we're focused on doing, and that's really the next step where we're going, Matt. So... I'm showing you here an example of a leaderboard and we're just rolling these out right now. But as you can see here, we have badges tied to this. We have points tied to this. There will be an overall leaderboard for a business for the year. And um, the way we're structuring this is 
a team leader or an owner or a coaching company will be able to come in and say, hey, you know what, these are the most important items for us to track. And we want to pull these in and make them a part of our scoreboard. And so here you're looking at under contract and closed as being a part of that scoreboard. So what happens is at the end of each month, there will be a gold medal winner, silver medal, and a bronze medal winner. Those people are going to get points associated with um, their performance. So the top three agents in each of those categories are going to get those medals, which have points associated with them as well. So for instance, a gold medal winner will get 3,000 points, silver 2,000, bronze 1,000. And so as you go throughout a year, you're going to be able to look up here and see okay, which uh, agents are getting the medals, which agents are hitting personal records. Every time you get a personal record for the month, you'll get a star and, and get points tied to that. And then in addition to that, uh, you're going to have challenges. And when somebody wins a challenge, they'll get a crown here. And an example of a challenge, a couple of things there, you can come in here and you'll be able to choose, hey, you know what, I'm going to do a challenge that's a day challenge. And I know a lot of people uh, within your businesses did this yesterday where they said, hey, we're going to have a call challenge. It's going to be number of contacts for today. And so somebody can come in, the uh, owner of the business can set a, a date range, which would just be one day in that case. And they could say, hey, we're going to assign 2,000 points to the winner of this contest and 1,000 points to the second place and 500 to third place. And that's an example of a contest. Uh, another example of a contest, actually, uh, spring is my wife is running a contest right now where she's going to take people to Tony Robbins, right? So it was about a three month contest and it's based on referrals, uh, reviews and closed transactions. So the way that would work in this gamification model is every time you get a re review, you're going to get a certain number of points. Every time you get a referral, you're going to get even more points. And every time you close a transaction, you're going to get even more points. And then when you get to a certain number of points, your Tony Robbins ticket is paid for. If you get to even more points, the airfare is also included. And if you hit the maximum goal, you get your airfare and hotel included. So those are just some examples of uh, gamification and how we see that happening and really getting your teams engaged and passionate about competing with each other. It, it's so true. I mean, you think about the principle of um, anytime we put ourselves in a competitive situations, we play differently. People play differently. You just think about the scenario of seeing kids playing down at the ball or down at the park, playing basketball, pick up game of basketball. And as soon as they say, let's keep score, the dynamics of that game just change dramatically, right? Exactly. And so anytime that we can implement those strategies and ideas, not only is it more fun when we're keeping score, uh, but it brings out the, that competitive nature in people um, and, and, and we play differently for sure. I love that. It's just, um, I think this is really, really brilliant. And, and, and this is stuff I haven't seen yet. So I'm excited to see these new dashboards. Yeah, cool. this is something that's coming out in the next 30 days and we're super excited to roll this out. I know a lot of people ask about uh, implementation or integration with CRMs and, and other platforms. So uh, whether it's your uh, contact management system or your database or whatever, um, and especially within our industry, right, real estate really is a database business. Uh, have you guys started working on integration with databases? Where are you at with that? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. So um, the first thing that we're doing is we're actually rolling out right now where we're pulling in people's databases for the last two years. And you can ignore this bubble chart here, but if you look at the one on the left that shows closed units, the closed volume chart will look like that. But what we're going to do is actually, instead of landing on a dashboard when you come in, you'll land on this snapshot page that will actually show you your closed volume for the last two years and how you're comparing to that this year. So all of our teams are going to be looking at and our brokerages are going to be looking at what they did in 2016, what they did in 2017, and how they're pacing against that in 2018. Um, what we're doing right here is um, we've actually developed an API so that we can pull your numbers in from, from your database or from a CSV file. And what I found is most teams do have their last two years numbers, at least in a spreadsheet. So we wanted to first focus on integrating with spreadsheets so that we could pull in those numbers so you instantly can compare and see the results based on, you know, your last two years and see that growth. Uh, in addition to that, we we actually are doing everything we can to 
not be a CRM. We're not at all focused on being a CRM, but want to partner with CRMs. So um, what we do is bring in their data. So if, uh, if you're using a CRM, we could pull in all of your contact data once we've integrated with that CRM so that you're not having to put people in the system. Although we've made it very simple that if you're using this and just putting people into the app, the only things that are required for you to put in is a name, a transaction amount, and um, a commission amount. So how much commission you're gonna put in your pocket at the end of the day. But we get that the less people have to put in and the less they have to repeat themselves, the more, more likely they are to do that. So uh, the first company that we were integrating with, we actually just signed an agreement with a company called MoxieWorks. MoxieWorks has about 100,000 people on their platform. They just surpassed that actually one day when we were on a call with them about a month ago. And uh, we are just beginning that integration right now so that we can pull the data uh, for, for their users directly into our platform. Very cool. So uh, in kind of wrapping up, we only have a few minutes left, but I'd love for you to um, maybe talk a little bit about some success stories that you've had uh, potentially with people that have integrated or, or implemented the app and use in their business. Um, and, uh, and then maybe just share a little bit with us about, you know, what's next for CSU and um, what's upcoming for, for your business. Yeah, great. So um, I'll start with actually what's upcoming for our business, because one of the things you just saw, I just showed you the gamification and pulling in the data for your business from the last few years. That's the direction we're going. Uh, we're expecting to do more and more of that type of stuff. Uh, as well as add some social element to the business so that you can share things like this on, out on your social, you know, social networks, Facebook, et cetera. Um, so for us, it's just more and more about making it a user experience that's really fun for our users uh, and really promotes driving them to, to take their business to the next level. Uh, as far as some success stories, so one of the things I'm seeing is people who come in and start doing this day one, um, I mean, I think we all know that most real estate agents probably do between five and 10 transactions a year, where we're seeing a lot of people who are coming in and doing this day one, they're doing 40 transactions plus their first year. And so for me, that's just really fun to see the impact this can have on someone's business. And I think the same thing with uh, brokerages and teams, uh, teams that are implementing this, uh, we've, we're seeing them double their numbers uh, over the course of a 12 month period. Uh, I listened to a, a a webinar about a month ago with Jeff Cohn talking about uh, he's with his coaches. He's seeing people who implement tracking their numbers. He's seeing as high as 300% increases. So anyway, just seeing that kind of uh, impact on businesses and teams is really exciting for me. Yeah. So cool. Brian, where do uh, people get a hold of you or um, connect with you uh, offline if they want to get more information or um, start working and utilizing and implementing the app in their own business. Yeah, so anyone can go to our website, with, which is sisu.co, so S-I-S-U dot C-O. If you type in dot com, you're not going to get us. So uh, go to sisu.co. When you go there, you can actually click on uh, requesting to see a demo. We'll take you through this in more detail, and we can actually get you, you know, get, get the order processing started for you there. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Brian, thanks for being on, man. I appreciate uh, yeah, you taking some time. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Sharon. Uh, very cool. Um, I think I, I maybe forgot to mention this at the beginning, but I'm, I, I'm so excited about what you're doing. As you know, I've invested, uh, a, a small investor in the product, but uh, wanted to be part of it because I'm just so excited about what you're doing and, and um, everything that you've got going. I just think it's uh, just brilliant. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Matt. We're happy to have you a part of it. Appreciate you inviting us on the show today. Okay. Uh, you guys, thank you so much for being on uh, with us and joining us. Uh, we'll make sure that we post uh, comments or excuse me, links from the things that we've referenced today below. Uh, so you can check out uh, the Sisu app, uh, the platform, get a hold of Brian. Also, uh, we'll link to a number of uh, the books that uh, I spoke about during the call and uh, hope that you'll join us uh, next week, um, Wednesday at noon, where I will be interviewing Julie Facer. I think it'll be excellent. Again, we're going to be talking about Jack Canfield's success principles. Uh, you guys, thanks. Peace, love, all those things, prosperity, uh, productivity, right? Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Brian. Take care, buddy. Yeah. See you, man.